Perception Channel podcast. Hello and welcome to another Conception Channel podcast brought to you by Yinstill Reproductive Wellness. I'm your host, Spence Pentland, and today we have a special guest on the show, Dr. Katie Jones. Welcome. <laughs> Thanks, Dr. Pentland. So Thanks. happy to be joining today. Uh, that's great. I'm, I'm excited. And, and as we were discussing just before we hit the, the record button, I'm, I'm happy uh, to be, in essence, kind of piggybacking this uh, episode on to an episode that that uh, we did with Dr. John Havelock from PCRM uh, on kind of all things PCOS. So if you haven't listened to that yet, you know, jump on over there. And uh, what we're going to be discussing today is uh, uh, the supplement that Yin still has developed called Regulate, which is um, particularly prescribed at our clinic for uh, women with PCOS. And mm-hmm. so I'm, <clears throat> uh, this is going to be really informative and, and, and digging in deep into, into the, the ingredients and, and a little bit about lifestyle, maybe it will go get thrown in there, but again, refer you back to the other podcast for, for some more information, but um, Katie, Dr. Jones, what can you give everyone kind of a bit of a rundown of what is in our regulate supplement and, and how it's used. And then we'll maybe start diving into some of the, the research. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. So uh, this formula is very well thought out. Um, It has a lot of evidence behind it. Uh, And you can tell Dr. Pentland definitely put a lot of thought um, in the selection of the ingredients uh, that we see here. Uh, It's super easy to take. It's just a powder that you're taking one and a half teaspoons per day. You can mix it in a liquid. It's very easy to be compliant with for patients. It's very soluble. Yeah. And it's got Mm -hmm. that little tropical punch flavor. So smoothies or juices or water, even it's, it's, it's easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I found powder dosing with patients is one of the easiest ways to get medicine in. (laughs) Not another pill, right? I, I, I grew up a pharmacist's son. So I think not another pill is something, um, lots of people like to hear, not just me. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll just list the ingredients here and then Dr. Pentland, you can let me know which one you'd like me to go into further detail with. So we have d chiro inositol, 100 milligrams, myo-inositol, 4,000 milligrams or 4 grams. We have carnitine, 300 milligrams, and chromium, 400 micrograms. Well, I, you know, from... I think a lot of people maybe that have, you know, PCOS or anovulation, which aren't their menstrual cycles aren't regular, or they've uh, been diagnosed with metabolic condition or or issues Mm -hmm. with insulin or blood sugar control, um, or experiencing, you know, um, um, you know, higher androgen or male hormone levels with acne or hair growth or hair loss. Um, and, or actually have been diagnosed, you know, um, via ultrasound with cystic polycystic ovaries, um, would get to a point where they would, you know, po- quite possibly stumble over things like, you know, Clomid to help them ovulate in particular, you know, most of our, uh, the people that come to you still are, are trying to get pregnant. So fertility mm. related, trying to ovulate would be, uh, primary, um, um, concern and, and, and so looking into things like clomiphene or letrozole to, you know, as medical, uh, frontline treatments as well as maybe metformin, but that's, you know, where we kind of, you know, come in from the more natural, uh, standpoint is, is with supplementation diet and lifestyle and very, very treatable and, and manageable condition with that. But eventually people will stumble onto, um, quote unquote inositols. Mm-hmm. And, uh, um, and there's, there's a, a really great body of evidence. I don't know. I just, you know, in, in my past digging, you know, at least, you know, 14 various studies st- on both the myo and the d So, mm-hmm. so can we maybe jump into them first and then we'll go down the ladder, so to speak. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, the inositols are definitely a good place to start. Definitely a mainstay of treatment in PCOS, definitely in the naturopathic uh, medical world, as well as it's starting to make its way into uh, conventional medicine as well, which is wonderful to see. Right. So let's differentiate between myo-inositol and then d chiro So yeah. they're, yeah, yeah. so they're both um, relatives of B vitamins. Um, and so myo-inositol specifically, we want this to be a little bit of a higher dose. Mm. Uh, we, so we go up to four grams. You can eventually go, go up a little bit higher, um, but four grams is standard of treatment just because going up a little bit higher can cause some GI disturbances. Right. So primarily uh, this has a great impact on metabolic function for PCOS patients who really fall into that insulin resistance category, uh, potentially type two diabetes, right, uh, right. things like that. Yeah. So not only um, does it help improve insulin sensitivity, um, it's also going to help with um, improving the HOMA index. So overall um, insulin resistance and metabolic picture, as well as improving oocyte quality and maturation. It's also going to have an impact on hormones. So often we'll see elevated LH in PSD. PCOS patients, right. um, and myo-inositol really improves that LH to FSH ratio, as well as having a impact on decreasing androgens like testosterone and androstenedione in the body. Yeah. Yeah. So that in turn, you know, just touching on that last point, uh, redu reduction of male hormones, um, mm -hmm. that'd be translating into hair loss, hair growth in, you know, particularly under the belly button, maybe on the chin and acne as well, which is such a common um, complaint amongst patients with PCOS. Mm -hmm, for sure. So yeah. the myo-inositol is definitely going to improve BMI, insulin sensitivity, and it's going to help to overall restore that menstrual function as well. Mostly through supporting egg quality maturation. So ovulation mm -hmm. occurs more regularly, correct? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the d chironositol we did talk about androgens um, for myo-inositol, but I found that the d chironositol actually has a more positive effect on the acne and hirsutism. So if we think of the myo-inositol as really that insulin resistance um, and then the level of the ovaries helping with fertility, things like right. that, right. the d chironositol um, is helpful symptomatically for the hyperandrogenism, specifically acne and hirsutism. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so that one's dosed lower. Right. We yeah. don't need as much. Yeah. Yeah. A little easier to take, I guess. Yeah. The inositol, I mean, ideally, I think I've seen in the literature 4,000 milligrams um, being ideal mm -hmm. uh, for yeah. the mile, right? Mm -hmm. um, um, I also, I, it, it's, um, so, ov so ovulation induction, trying to regulate cycles. A lot of the literature out there is kind of pointing toward, uh, or, or the way the studies have been set up is using it in tandem with clomiphene or letrozole or, or you know, and, and, uh, and then having a, another arm of a placebo, right? Um, mm -hmm. And so it, it, it really showing, you know, um, being supportive on its own as a standalone or in conjunction with kind of those frontline ovulation induction fertility drugs like clomiphene or, or letrozole. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can definitely be beneficial um, and very safe to use in conjunction with those medications. There was, I, I also saw, you know, something else too, looking at uh, fer fertilization rates actually in IVF and there being a uh, significant improvement, which was, was, uh, beneficial and we could I, I, I think on our we, we put most of the information of for our supplements on our in our shop where we where we do sell them to our patients um, mm -hmm. uh, or people who get a consult with us but um, it uh, all the you know references to research will be there and and more of this information you know will be there but is there there's also uh, um, 
uh, a note that I, I found about it improving glutathione levels in red blood cells or in, in some research, mm. I've, I've, I've seen that pop up and that can be beneficial in, in many ways, including, you know, um, um, what you said to uh, another supplement being kind of beneficial being NAC mm-hmm. and, yeah. and maybe that's possibly it's, it's reverse mechanism somehow is through that glutathione pathway. Can you just touch on the NAC piece for a second, what you're talking about before? Yeah, for sure. So NAC, uh, it's not included in this formula, but potentially something we could think about in the future. It's in our quality, our quality supplement. And usually we have, you know, our our PCOS um, women on the regulated and the quality more for Mm -hmm. the A quality, right? Yeah, exactly. So NAC is a precursor to glutathione, which is uh, a master antioxidant in the body. So the NAC really helps to upregulate glutathione in the body. So it has extremely powerful antioxidant and anti-inflammatory effects, which I think overall is what helps with the ovulation induction for these patients. Right. Um, Right. So NAC is another uh, supplement that can be used in combination with fertility medication such as clomiphene and letrozole. So if a right. patient was undergoing a medicated IUI, IVF, we can use it safely with them. Yeah. And NAC has been shown to improve the number of follicles, pregnancy rates, and improve the quality of endometrial lining um, right. in patients. And then specifically with those patients who really have that strong metabolic picture, um, insulin resistance, uh, yeah. really helpful to improve lipid profiles, fasting blood sugar and fasting insulin. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, so yeah, if you're listening, check out our quality supplement. Cause I mean, mm-hmm. there's, there's N-acetylcysteine or the NAC, which, which Dr. Jones was speaking to there. Um, uh, improving and recycling glutathione or precursor to glutathione pathways. And then, you know, there's recycling components as well for antioxidants within that formulation and via different pathways with the vitamin C and et cetera, et cetera, but uh, fantastic combination to regulate and the quality, but you, before a little bit earlier, you talked about um, um, it being beneficial possibly for mood or anxiety, but that's at a substantially higher dose with the myo-inositol. Is that right? It is. Yeah. Inositol is probably one of the most fascinating supplements for me. And um, I do get really excited when I see these supplements put kind of head to head with other drug therapies that are out there um, in randomized controlled trials. And it's really exciting to see that these natural therapies can be so so effective right. and ositol definitely um has been used effectively for anxiety and mood disorders yeah. uh, but you're going up uh, upwards of 10 grams uh, yeah. for those patients specifically a lot huh? mm-hmm. i have seen it um be successful with patients struggling with uh, panic disorder and things like that nice yeah well i mean so so I mean, a woman who's suffering from anxiety, you know, at times there's a, it, the, the teaspoon and a half or the proper dosage for the regulate supplement uh, provides 4,000 milligrams of inositol, mm-hmm. right? So, I mean, to double that would get you close to that um, mm-hmm. beneficial level for, for anxiety and, and that um, doubling the uh, doses of the other supplements in there um, for shorter periods of time wouldn't, wouldn't uh, in my uh, opinion be of any, um, concern. So, I mean, if someone maybe has, you know, difficulty, um, with mood or, um, darkness during premenstrual time or something, it may be of benefit. Um, Mm, Oh, for sure. And that's the, the beautiful thing about these, uh, combinations, combinations is that, um, they can be used for, for different conditions. And that's when that tailoring to the patient, um, with dosing and specific recommendations comes into play. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. And I'll great. I mean, it's, um, you know, we, uh, use it in, or you would use it in, in MIC injections too. And I love it as, mm-hmm. as part of that component, the methionine and acetal and choline, mm-hmm. um, is, is, just such a, a wonderful combination, but that's a whole other topic. <laughs> but um, 
Last but not least, um, maybe, and this is a good segue into uh, a quick chat about um, uh, diet, but uh, inositols are mostly, they're, they're kind of chemically similar to my understanding uh, of, as B vitamins, and that's why they kind of get lumped that way, as you said. But I think they're also chemically similar to glucose, but most of all, they're, they're a cell signaler, which we want mm -hmm. to focus on and help with the, with the um, uh, insulin, et cetera. But it's found in foods mostly, or at least higher levels in whole grains and citrus fruits to my understanding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we can always get some through foods as well. Yeah. 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 We want to, if we can eat it, it's always best. So, and that yeah. often with PCOS or metabolic conditions such as obesity, which often accompanies um, PCOS or diabetes, which PCOS is a pr in most terms, you know, uh, a pre-diabetic condition. Um, so turning to food, you know, and um, lowering high glycemic index food intake and replacing it with more, you know, vegetable, you know, and um, intake would be, uh, would be advisable as well. Is that, is that uh, something you feel too? Definitely. Yeah. And uh, weight loss isn't always a part of PCOS treatment, um, but it definitely is a large part for those type A, type B PCOS patients that right. kind of fit more into that classic PCOS. Or typical, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so with those patients, um, diet and lifestyle it definitely should come first right. and it can be the most tricky part of the treatment, um, but definitely something to uh, have as a primary uh, treatment goal is to really implement those diet and lifestyle changes. Right, right. I was doing some research uh, recently and it looks like about 5% of body weight loss overall can result in uh, regaining a period. So yeah. you just kind of have to reemphasize to the patients it's, it's small chunks over time, right? right. Um, weight loss is definitely a journey, but even just 5% of body weight loss can make a huge difference in regaining the cycle. Yeah. And also in, in the, 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 passing along of, of those epigenetics to, to the mm. offspring as well. It's just, you know, it's healthy. If there is, if there, if someone is overweight to, of course, you know, to work on that is, is uh, important. And, and it's so often accompanies, you know, uh, that typical PCOS, as you, as you put it, that phenotype, mm -hmm. but there's also uh, it, it, that's a good segue into, you know, um, just quickly, touching on the more uh, atypical, the thin type, maybe uh, PCOS and inositol actually being, mm -hmm. uh, or, or it being maybe misconstrued that, that because someone isn't over overweight, there isn't insulin sensitivity, exactly. um, yeah. you know, but that's, that's not the case, right? No. Yeah, you're exactly right. And I think we're getting there in medicine um, for more accurate diagnosis of PCOS, um, but there's still there's still quite a long way to go. So just because a patient doesn't fit that classic PCOS picture doesn't mean there um, isn't things that need to be addressed. Um, it Very similarly, mean, actually, right? Just the weight yeah, loss would be the exactly. only difference, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in terms of diet, um, I like to start um, as a baseline of just really cutting out refined sugars, those processed foods. Right. Um, I find that makes a huge difference um, and it can be big changes for, for patients. So I like that may be all they need, right? Yeah. 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 So um, I always emphasize kind of a higher protein, higher fat, but primarily plant fats um, right. as a basis for the diet and then good quality um, carbohydrates, um, yeah. particularly a little bit lower on the glycemic index, yeah. um, and very high quality animal protein. So, yeah. um, eating that in moderation, local, organic, grass finished. Yeah. Yeah. And again, whole grains and citrus fruits. There you go. That's yeah. the high end inositol. And yeah. just to, to jump back one, um, piece as well, also that the inositol and it's, and it's, um, um, functioning with the male hormones, um, mm -hmm. uh, more common in maybe the a, atypical thin phenotype PCOS as well. The inositol works well. Mm -hmm. that piece yeah. too. 
So, um, and, and you, you, you don't necessarily, the, the dietary piece there might be a little bit different. You might, um, um, in a atypical, uh, thin type, you may not want to be counseling. So, so, um, so much on, on cutting down on carbohydrates, that's more of a weight loss technique, right? Um, mm. Yeah. And to just make them quality. Um, exactly. Carbohydrates, right? Yeah. Yeah. Another piece um, with food that I love to draw into, and you can probably speak more to this, Dr. Pentland, being a doctor of Chinese medicine, but I love TCM food therapy. So uh, mm. PCOS and TCM is considered um, most commonly um, accumulation of phlegm and dampness in the body. So I will often incorporate foods with the patients to clear phlegm and dampness as well. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, it can always, traditional Chinese medicine food cure um, principles can be superimposed over any diet style. Yeah. And, and that's why it's wonderful. It's not another diet to add to your, to your, to your yeah. plate. And, and most people that come through you and still will have received, you know, at least a, a fundamental TCM diagnostic where they can use the instill fertility diet and workbook that they get for free mm -hmm. you know, to, to see some of the principles that what Dr. Jones is alluding to, you know, the dampness and phlegm, um, um, elimination diet is, is, uh, is, would be beneficial for sure. Um, but, um, so let's, let, I, I think so for lifestyle and diet, that is amazing. Um, and, and for inositol, I think, is there anything else you wanted to add there or can we maybe jump into the, the carnitine? Yeah, no, let's, let's jump into carnitine. Let's jump and jumping being <laughs> the key word because I, I always associate, um, and, and the lifestyle, the diet more being in the inositol follow-up and maybe exercise will kind of, will will mix in here to carnitine because carnitine, particularly L-carnitine tartrate, um, is, is an amino acid and, and that version versus the acetyl, uh, L-carnitine is more, seems to be associated with, um, more, um, physical improvements in output, mm -hmm. yeah. um, versus the acetyl, but more it, it, when it's acetylized, it can more easily cross the blood brain barrier and it is more used for, um, cognitive effect, but, um, um, so it's an amino acid and, um, anyone that has dove deeply at all into athletics or competed in any way um, physically um, would probably have bumped into carnitine along the way because of its uh, uh, reputation for athletic performance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah uh, so, so we'll maybe touch on, on the exercise component because diet and exercise um, are two musts or, or at least two, uh, extremely necessary for, for proper management of PCOS. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so carnitine uh, significantly plays a role in the weight loss picture um, and decreasing BMI. Uh, and then it also has a positive effect on lipid profiles. So it's been shown to reduce the total cholesterol and LDLs and right. increase the HDLs, which is what we want to see. And then in addition, in terms of fertility, um, it's going to decrease oxidative stress overall um, right. and has positive effects on follicles as well. There is a uh, uh, randomized clinical trial that was published in the European Journal of Obstetrics and Gynecology and Reproductive Biology in 2014. Um, and it was... Uh, adding L-carnitine -L to uh, clomiphene resistant PCOS mm -hmm. women. And I think we're on the same wavelength because I was just about to, to, to touch on that. that same thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, great. I mean, I mean, their conclusion was it, it was it improves quality of ovulation and, and, and pregnancy rate, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And it was randomized. And, and so it checks all the boxes for, for, um, um, respected, um, scientific study, but, um, so what do you have, do you want to touch a little bit more deeply on what they found in, in that study? Um, 
I think you summarized it, it pretty well. So essentially those women who may have not responded to clomiphene in the past um, are likely to have beneficial effects when we add in carnitine for them. So like Dr. Pentland said, improved ovulation and pregnancy rates, which is what we want to see with our, our fertility patients. Right. But I think they also found, you know, when I read a little bit more into it, uterine lining thickness was improved, mm -hmm. follicle count had, had improvement, um, estrogen progesterone levels, as well as what you already touched on, you know, lipid and glucose and like hemoglobin A1C levels, I think were also uh, regulated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, although, so, so that's pretty monumental. And, and, um, you know, as far as the, the research um, showing some improvement in fat loss, um, I think that some of the conclusions that could be drawn from that must be from the glucose and, and insulin sensitivity, but also just due to that um, athletic performance and that energy increase that results mm -hmm. in more and more effective exercise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I agree. Um, but it is, um, best known, like you said, though, for carnitine for its mitochondrial oxidation. And, and that's where the energy comes from. Um, and it's, um, utilization of long chain fatty acids, I think for energy. And, and that's, I think what anyone trying to get into ketogenesis is trying to accomplish in carnitine helps, helps that in, in just on its own. Uh, it's mostly found though, um, for vegans, vegetarians, it's mostly found in meat and beef, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit tougher maybe to get, mm -hmm. um, for vegetarians, but, um, so, uh, really easily dissolved too. So it was a, a no brainer, um, uh, addition to, to this, to the regulate supplement. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm, I have a special deep love. I, I love exercise. I love having lots of energy. I mean, but, um, I also, you know, work quite closely with a lot of the men as do you that come through you and still, but, um, mm -hmm. carnitine is a staple, uh, of the abundance supplement for, for sperm and, uh, um, sexual health, uh, mm -hmm. at instill. Um, and it, uh, probably has more evidence than, um, you know, on carnitine than any other aspect of, of what it does do on, on actually the improvement of sperm motility. Mm -hmm. Which makes sense, right? Yeah, it sure does. The mitochondrial piece, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Um, so like I said, maybe uh, is, if there's anything else you, you want to touch on, go for it, but um, maybe you could segue here because the carnitine and, and that energy and athletic performance piece to it. How important is, is uh, exercise in PCOS management? I think uh, it's definitely uh, important. I'm always careful in terms of what type of exercise the patient yep. is already doing um, because some patients you're going to have a wide range right you might have a patient who's not exercising at all you might have a patient that falls into that over exercise excessive exercise kind of picture yep. uh, so you want to make sure it's definitely balanced as well as sustainable for the patient or fun um, maybe <laughs> exactly and fun uh, it has been shown that um 30 to 60 minutes per day is probably the number that you'd want to hit. There's no reason to go over 60 minutes per day. Right. Um, and I like to have a mix between high intensity interval training, as well as restorative exercise uh, to balance it out. Okay. And I would, I would add my, that's great advice. And, and that is going to resonate with a lot and maybe also you know, from, from my stance, I, I often am, you know, in alignment with the uh, ESHRA guidelines for, for PCOS and, and um, weight loss, mm -hmm. uh, which is the European Society of Human Reproduction and Endocrinology. It, <clears throat> they are advocates of four to five days a week, 30 to 45 minutes of walking. And that's typically in an aerobic range and mm -hmm. aerobic target heart rates are, 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 
you know, more conducive to fat loss and, and just, uh, um, oxygenation of the cells. So, so overall energy, but also I think, um, something important to, to touch on anyone with diabetes or pre-diabetes would probably be counseled on the, the concept of, of muscle contraction being an, an important, um, component of, of the utilization and sensitivity of insulin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so that high intensity interval, or even just some light resistance training of some sort, you know, you don't have to hit the gym and, and, uh, be pumping weights, but you can, you can do a little bit of isometrics or something using your own body weight yeah. to, to just, you you know, using yoga and Definitely. Yeah. The, the isometric contractions and using your own body weight, that's definitely uh, one of my preferences in terms of exercise. Yeah. Fantastic. So, um, okay. So, but I, I again, I, it, to me, I, I really emphasize it and I, and I appreciate your, uh, um, sensitivity to where meeting people where they're at. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. like, yeah. You know, if you're not doing anything, you haven't been exercising, um, start walking. Yeah, I mean, exactly. You know, start with 20 minutes a day and build up, but you gotta include, um, exercise into your life. It just is part of the human condition. And particularly when you've got, um, insulin sensitivity and PCOS. Yeah, it's definitely a critical uh, component of an, any treatment plan. Um, but like I said, starting small, meeting the patient where they're at and moving up from there, yeah. um, as well as monitoring for any, um, any excess of exercise as well. Yeah, so that's more the peripheral insulin sensitivity piece. And then the you know, the pancreatic more, that's the dietary side. And, mm -hmm. uh, and so it, it's, it's important to, to touch on both of those. So, um, anything else you wanted to touch on about carnitine or, or can we move on to, to finally chromium? Cause chromium is pretty quick. It's as we discussed before the call too, there's, there's a lot of anecdotal and a lot of evidence over time, a lot of research been done on chromium, but not, uh, not huge impact on a pretty, pretty mild to moderate, um, um, impact on regulation of insulin from my, from my understanding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Let's round things out with, with chromium. Yeah. Um, but I do, I have found some, some indications that it, uh, may be, may be beneficial in, in fighting depression and snacking. Mm, yeah. And, and binge eating somehow. Yeah. Specifically chromium, um, it's not gonna like some of the other uh, supplements or ingredients that we've talked about. Um, it's not gonna have a huge impact on um, like inflammation going on in the body, which is always important to address. It's really quite specific to reducing inst insulin resistance um, and improving that fasting glucose to insulin ratio. Uh, so when those blood sugars are uh, brought into balance uh, and more normalized, it's going to have beneficial effects on um, ovulation induction as well as acne and hirsutism, just because that insulin resistance is so closely linked to anovulatory cycles as well as the hyperandrogenism. Uh, but when I, when I think about chromium primarily uh, used to reduce insulin resistance, and so yes, that can help with um, like snacking, like Dr. Pentland said, just, just because of that overall balance in blood sugars. Does it, I, yeah, I wonder, I'd, I'd love to dig a little bit deeper in that. I, and I wonder if it does have effect on leptin and ghrelin levels or, or something that control appetite and satiation. But, uh, you know, that's obviously, you know, maybe not even been done because I didn't see it, but uh, that could be a contributor there. Yeah, often um, it can be used on its own or in different combination products um, that address those types of things for sure. Uh, yeah. Sometimes with other herbs as well. Yeah, you're going to see it, you know, uh, in pop health literature almost, you know, mm -hmm. coupled with cinnamon and apple cider vinegar to control yeah. uh, blood sugar. So those are great things to, you know, as chromium as a supplement, if you're not taking our regulator or if you're um, you know, adding 
you know, cinnamon to your smoothies or tea or apple cider vinegar, you know, some of that every morning. Also, these things can also be a benefit to some of the dietary things we've talked about as well. Yeah. Yeah. I usually encourage my patients to uh, increase their cinnamon intake through food as well. So adding in that in with breakfast on oatmeal, uh, sprinkling into smoothies, things like that, about a teaspoon to two teaspoons per day. Yeah. There's all kinds of little hacks. I mean, even, you know, on more starchy carbohydrates, you add some, you know, cold pressed extra virgin organic olive oil, you know, and it, it can, you know, slow its glycemic release. And it, I, it, I mean, these are things that are all worthwhile kind of looking into and just kind of incorporating into your regular life um, when you're dealing with PCOS, but taking the regulate, considering that quality supplement, just because of some of the antioxidant and uh, um, inflammatory mm. um, benefits and tending diet and, and making sure you exercise. This is, this is the, the primary steps to, to managing your PCOS if need be um, moving into metformin or if it's fertility related, like letrozoles or clomiphenes may be of, of benefit as well. And then from there, you know, you can still read from acupuncture to, to, to all kinds of other things that we would counsel on to help with lifestyle and, and bringing stress levels down too, because that all plays a role in, mm-hmm. in adipose tissue or fat um, storage and weight loss and, and everything. So I, there's got to be a holistic piece too, to this. So is there anything you want to touch on before we kind of wrap up today, just on messaging to, to your potential listeners out there that have, or patients that have uh, PCOS? Yeah. Well, I just like to, uh, send some encouragement to uh, any patients who are wondering if they have PCOS or um, have recently been diagnosed with PCOS or maybe have been dealing with it for a long period of time. Um, There's definitely a lot that naturopathic medicine and traditional Chinese medicine can offer you. And even though uh, this conversation could have probably gone on longer, (laughs) it just kind of sets that, that foundation of treatment um, for patients that come into Yinstel. And I hope it gives them hope because there is, there really are so many uh, treatment options Uh, in comparison to conventional medicine. There's, there's a lot of different tools that we can draw from. Um, And we did mention some studies today. So they've been shown uh, to be effective. So lots of hope for these patients. Um, And it's one of my favorite conditions to treat. Oh, that's great. Well, then come see Katie. (laughs) um, It is a manageable condition. It requires Mm -hmm. commitment and, and, and some education and, and, you know, you'll, you can go down the rabbit hole, like we were talking about at the start, vitamin D just for overall health. Berberine is another, you know, supplement that's had some amazing, you know, uh, uh, research done with it and, and blood sugar and insulin uh, resistance, um, et cetera, et cetera. You can go, uh, you know, you can really go down the rabbit hole and, and, but e- creating a plan and sticking with it. So you can kind of live your life is, is also an important piece as well. And just knowing like, like uh, Dr. Jones said that there's, there's so much hope mm-hmm. in, in with this condition. And it is one that really does have the solid evidence behind natural treatments um, helping overcome mm-hmm. it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, great. Um, so uh, again, um, thank you so much for, for hopping on the call, Dr. Katie Jones from Yinstill. In no Vancouver. problem. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and if you've got any questions about the regulate supplement, please, you know, contact us anytime. Um, otherwise, if you love our, our, uh, um, podcast, leave a review, please Apple iTunes podcasts. And, uh, yeah. Thanks again, Dr. Katie Jones for being with us today. Thanks so much for having me. Excellent. Take care. Bye.